Hello everyone and welcome to this special episode of Marxist Voice. Uh, my name is Adam Booth, the editor of Socialist.net. I'm your host for tonight. And of course, for those who aren't aware, uh, this uh, Marxist Voice is the channel and podcast of Socialist Appeal, uh, the British section of the International Marxist Tendency. We are the Marxist Voice of Labour and Youth, as we say. Uh, you can follow us, obviously, on all our social media channels, uh, Facebook, Twitter, uh, Instagram, YouTube. And of course, tonight uh, we're having this special broadcast because of the uh, incendiary events, really, that have uh, exploded uh, today in terms of the Labour Party, uh, the release of the EHRC report into alleged anti-Semitism within the Labour Party, and, uh, of course, uh, most noticeably, uh, the suspension, the outrageous, scandalous suspension of Jeremy Corbyn by the, the new Labour leadership uh, for coming out uh, in, in defence, basically, of the left and, uh, and some of the accusations that have been levelled around anti-Semitism. Uh, and obviously this has seen Jeremy Corbyn is suspended today uh, as a member and uh, had the whip withdrawn as an MP. And tonight to discuss these events and most importantly how the left should respond, uh, we're very lucky to be joined uh, once again by Rob Sewell, um, editor of Socialist Appeal. So welcome there Rob, uh, thanks again for joining us tonight. And um, I guess really the first uh, obvious question is what exactly do these events today represent? What What is this suspension of Corbyn? Well, clearly, uh, you know, many people would say this is, uh, particularly in the Labour Party, you say it's, a, it's an outrage and it's a, a scandal. Uh, but on the other hand, you could say that uh, it's not a complete surprise given the trajectory of the past uh, six or nine months where uh, Steer Karma uh, as a, a Starmer or others, as, as basically trying to shift the party to the right and obliterate the Corbyn era. And uh, as a consequence, you know, he's removed all the, the left wingers from the shadow cabinet and even got rid of uh, Rebecca Long Bailey. And uh, clearly, he's trying to prove himself as the uh, safe pair of hands for capitalism, uh, that he's an establishment man. And as he says, you know, the Labour Party is under, under new management, a new leadership. You know, we're, we're back to the old good old days when the right wing controlled the, uh, the, the Labour Party. So this is part of, of this, really. It's part of the process. And therefore, I, I don't think we should be shocked by it, but, it's, but it shows how, how ruthless you know, the right wing are prepared to be when it comes to defending their particular patch. And um, I think, uh, you know, know thy enemy. It's clearly, you know, clear that the the right wing in the in the Labour Party and the and, for, and the trade unions, for that matter, you know, are the are the attack dogs of capitalism. Uh, they are the defenders of capitalism in the ranks of the Labour movement, and um, you know, as as a co consequence, of course, they they defend capitalism. They also defend their own careers, which is also very important as far as they're concerned, uh, and they're prepared to take whatever measures are needed to uh, to serve that particular end. And, uh, you know, the, the reason for this, the reason why they're so strident and the reason why they're prepared to take these, uh, these measures is because they feel the, the backing of, of the establishment, of capitalism, of the bourgeois press, of the ruling class. That stands behind them and urges them on. And therefore, they feel, you know, confident to be able to, 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 to engage in this kind of, uh, well, the beginning of a purge, really, in, in, in the Labour Party. And... Uh, I think we have to to appreciate uh, that you know that uh, behind them stands capitalism the interest of capitalism and they would like to go the whole hog you know i think it was uh, tony blair who said that uh, to, to to really turn back the clock to uh, pre-corbyn days we have to expel or get rid of in one form or another three hundred thousand ordinary mm -hmm. labor party mm -hmm. members yeah and whether they're expelled or driven out or demoralized by any any means necessary and that's what they're attempting uh, to do. And this is part of this process, I believe. So really, it's a declaration of war by this new leadership. As you say, they've, they've even had this campaign where they've, they've uh, signified, you know, what new leadership they are, the flag waving, the patriotism, the right would turn. And after a few months of kind of repeating the hollow, vacuous statement for unity and so forth, this, this really seems to be like, you know, this is a declaration of war now. This is the right wing throwing the gauntlet down to the left. And, and as you said, it's really 
going beyond just the, uh, the, the question of Jeremy Corbyn himself, but I've seen today there's uh, reports coming out that, that staffers at Labour HQ are being told to basically trawl social media and look for anyone who's defending Corbyn and agreeing with his statements uh, regarding uh, you know some of the criticisms he's made around the EHRC report and the accusations of anti-Semitism. So clearly they are, as you say, going for an entire purge of uh, the left. There's also the campaign against anti-Semitism, which is a kind of right-wing uh, campaign being led against the left. Um, they've also said that they want to see investigations into 15 other Labour MPs, all left-wingers, people like Diane Abbott, Richard Bergen, Rebecca Long-Bailey. So as you say, this is really the beginnings of, a, of an attempt to expunge the left from you know top to bottom. And uh, why, why do you think it's now that they're trying to kind of go about this? You know, why... Why have they waited until this point uh, to, to suddenly make this big, bold move? Well, it's obviously yeah, planned. That's, there's no question about that. And uh, it's a strategy. And they believe, that I would imagine, that the, the report from the ER, was it EHRC, was going to be, uh, you know, the, the firing shot for a, a declaration of war on, on, the, on the left and an attempt to drive out... Uh, the, uh, the the militant ranks in, in the constituency uh, parties, and uh, clearly that's that's part of the, of, of the setup. Um, we know that uh, this question of anti-Semitism um, has been used um, for political ends. Uh, you know, it's quite clear we're against anti-Semitism in all its forms, but it was certainly blown out of up of a lot proportion, and used uh, deliberately by the right wing as a means to attack Corbyn, attack the leadership and sabotage the, the Labour Party. And uh, again, they haven't finished with this particular weapon, if you like, which is a scandal. Mm -hmm. And um, yes, they, they're now going to troll uh, to, you know, to try and find um, anybody who supports Corbyn or justifies Corbyn's stand mm -hmm. is, uh, is potentially uh, in the firing line to get uh, uh, removed from the Labour Party. Mm -hmm. But this is no time to uh, hide. I think this is a question of... Um, of standing up to these uh, these pre these people, mm. and uh, you know a fight should be declared. You know we can't just mess about. We you know they feel if there's enough weakness, then it invites greater aggression, as we know. And if they think that uh, that people are going to accept it, then they will they will be emboldened to carry through further and further measures. And that is why it's it's it's, it's imperative that the left. You know, uh, makes a stand. Not just the stand. It makes a it goes on the offensive. Mm. You know, the, the best form of defence is is is, is, a, is attack precisely, mm. Mm. and uh, they should be attacked. I mean, Starmer came into the leadership promising to defend the certain you know the ten points and the, the heritage mm. and so mm. forth, so called of, of Corbyn and and unity above all unity. What's unity going to do with this measure? You know, unity is out of the window. Yeah, and that's just a ploy in order to get votes to get elected. Once he was elected. Yeah. Then he's to prove to the establishment he was the man who's going to carry through an attempted counter-revolution in the Labour Party to bring the Labour Party back, as I said, under the domination of the right wing itself. And uh, so this is just uh, this is just a, a preconceived uh, uh, plan in order to accomplish uh, this. But it's easier said than done, of course. You know, uh, you can have a plan, but whether it goes it can be carried out, it depends on the resistance that is shown. And that's, of course, they have attempted. I know there's a circular gone round from the General Secretary of the Labour Party to all constituencies, basically saying you can't discuss uh, the question of this report from the, uh, uh, the Equalities Commission. Uh, it's, it's, all, it's, all, it's, all, it's all it's a legal matter, therefore you cannot uh, raise mm -hmm. issues. In other words, they've attempted to bury the discussion and they've used this pandemic, by the way, because there's no Labour Party meetings taking place in, in a face-to-face in a -face capacity. They've used this in order to uh, secure their position and, and really squeeze out people and demoralise people uh, in order to, to strengthen their position. It, it strikes so me as quite similar, Rob. It, it strikes me as quite similar in that respect. You know, the, the real opportunists, these right-wingers, as you say, this is clearly orchestrated. Um, you know, I was watching uh, Keir Starmer's uh, statement, uh, official statement on that he put out uh, from the Labour Party earlier today and every single one of the questions that they invited in 
uh, was obviously pre-arranged and it was all from the usual mainstream media channels and every single one of them was saying you know this isn't going far enough you need to suspend Corbyn are you going to do that are you willing to do that and then lo and behold obviously the suspension of Corbyn came and then you've got the calls for the suspension of other left-wingers other MPs other members it all seems highly orchestrated to me and 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 very reminiscent actually of the 2016 um, chicken coup where again they took advantage of the kind of chaos in the wake of the Brexit referendum result to suddenly launch this uh, attempt to get rid of Corbyn back then only now obviously it's not just removing Corbyn, Corbyn's already gone, it's now it's trying to remove as you say the, the hundreds of thousands of members that stand in the way now back then we fought the chicken coup with kind of mass mobilisation you saw momentum calling big demonstrations uh, and it was really the grassroots kind of response that's that actually overturned that and defeated that coup attempt do you think we need something like that again today really you know this kind of groundswell of uh, of a mass campaign to fight back sure you know if, if momentum and the, and the left uh, are worth a salt this is what they should be doing you know it's a, it's a battle for the survival of of, of the labor party in many uh, respects and uh, they've got to be the forefront uh, of it, you know, and, you know, the members of parliament. Now's the time. There's no point in, in beating around the bush, hoping that the Starmer's going to be, you know, nice and gentle to everybody else. And this is just, a, you know, keep quiet, you know, keep unity. I know some people said, you know, we should, you know, still maintain unity. Well, how can I have unity with people who are stabbing you in the back? And anyway, this is nothing new. Let's be clear about it. You mentioned the, the chicken code 2016. It's been an ongoing civil war since mm. 2015. As soon as uh, uh, Corbyn got elected, there's been a civil war in the Labour Party pursued by the right wing, yeah. you know, armed and backed by the capitalists and, and, and the media uh, in order to, 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 to discredit Corbyn on the one hand and to uh, basically undermine the whole left wing in, in the party. And it's been an ongoing uh, battle. And that's, this is the this is the culmination. Right? Unfortunately, I would say that the left in the past didn't uh, meet that uh, challenge as it should have been done. As I explained before, the right wing are quite ruthless when it comes to defending their position, and that's been historical in the Labour Party. You know, this is not the first time they've attacked the left. You know, in the 1950s, they were they tried to uh, expel Nye Bevan. You know, they talk about the great Nye Bevan. You know, built the National Health Service. They, these people wanted to. Uh, they took the whip off him, and they tried to expel him. And every time the the right, the, the left have attempted to uh, to uh, act more, uh, you know, more boldly, the right wing have, have taken vicious uh, action in expulsions and so on. They talk about a broad church, <laughs> you know, their only church they didn't do is it? their own right wing church, if you like. And uh, you know, it's it's a it's a, a farce. It's it's quite clear, you know, that the the right wing, uh, as I said earlier, are. are um, they represent the interests of capitalism and therefore they're very uh, determined in what they want to do and, and have a, a clear message of where they want to go. And um, uh, that the left itself had really made uh, some serious mistakes in the last uh, period, in the last five years. There were many opportunities where the left could have swept out the, the, the right wing careerists in the party, uh, could have brought back uh, the socialist constitution that was purged by um, Tony, Tony Blair. And we could have had a, you know, a fully fledged socialist party uh, fight it against the Tories at the present uh, time, um, minus this uh, sabotage from the, the right wing in the party. But um, uh, and, and the failure really is this attempt to 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 believe that the right wing are somehow uh, comrades of ours, you know, or colleagues of ours, you know, and they're they're clearly uh, Tory infiltrators who are uh, hell-bent on, on defending the interests of capitalism within the ranks of, of the Labour Party and the trade unions, for that, for that matter. And the whole uh, ethos is to uh, uh, cleanse the Labour Party uh, of uh, elements who are attempting to change society and reinforce the position of those who uh, uh, see capitalism as, as, the, as the main uh, beneficiary, if you like. And, uh, you know, the trade union leaders have a, a very... Um, how can you say? Uh, they, 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 they could have used their weight because they effectively controlled the Labour Party. At Labour Party conference, 50% of the vote is determined by the trade unions. And when you consider the vast majority of the constituency Labour Parties, the ordinary Labour Parties are, are uh, controlled by the left, 
then it would be quite easily to, to carry through radical policies, bring in open selection or you know, automatic reselection of MPs and, and adopt all the policies that were needed that would uh, transform the Labour Party completely. Unfortunately, they, they, uh, they, they, were, they were interested in compromise. There was never, there's never a right time, they said, for bringing in things. And therefore, they scuttled the, uh, the attempts by the rank and file to transform the Labour Party completely. You know, we had uh, the instance of Clause 4, where uh, the vast majority of constituency parties voted in favour of restoring Clause 4, which is the socialist commitment that the Labour Party had, which was abolished by, by Tony Blair. Um, and yet, uh, this was blocked by the trade unions, uh, which is <laughs> where you get at a time when, when they could have easily been carried, and therefore we've been, a different, been in a different position. Uh, likewise, with, with the open selection. Here we had a position where 90% of constituency parties favoured open selection. Mm. Um, and they wanted to debate, uh, debate it and push it through. And yet uh, we saw the, uh, the role of the trade unions was 90% of the, of the vote of the trade unions was to block such a discussion. Mm. And therefore, you know, that opened the way then for uh, the defeat of the left, as a matter of fact, because the only way you can challenge the right wing in the parliamentary Labour Party is give democracy to the rank and file of the party. There's no other way. And if you refuse to do that, then you're going to be you're going to you're going to end up in a mess. And uh, this this whole attempt was a, an attempt to compromise. You know where you can compromise. You know it's a, we have to rec recognize the real nature of the right wing, which are uh, you know agents of an, of, a, of an enemy class within the movement, and you can't co compromise with them. In fact, they need to be cleared out. They are infiltrators. We need to, people who are prepared to represent the interests of the working class. And as a result of those those measures. Um, who, all that power, all that energy, all that support for a fundamental transformation of the Labour Party was lost. I mean, you, and once the right wing gap, gap get a uh, hold of, uh, of the reins, they don't mess about, they don't compromise, mm. they don't water down the position, they carry through in a, in a vicious way uh, everything that's in their interest to carry through, including the suspension of Jeremy Corbyn. I mean, mm. you know, give the devil their due. You know, they're, they're ruthless when it comes to representing their interests. And it's about time that the trade union leaders acted in the same ruthless fashion, but in the interest of the working class. That's mm. the whole point. Mm. Instead of compromising and wheeling and dealing. And that's a, it's a reflection, really, of their politics. That's the problem with it. Mm. That they, they think that, uh, you know, they have no um, uh, perspective of, of socialism. They think that you can compromise within capitalism. We'll get a milder, gentler capitalism. You know, they've lost faith in change in society, really. Mm. And that's a reflection then of, a, of their attempt to compromise within the Labour and trade union movement. It's the same, you see same it, method, if you like. You see it also with, at the moment, in response to this uh, act of aggression, even a lot of the left leaders are saying, you know, we need to keep calm. We need to, you know, don't rise to the to the bait. And it's, you know, it's kind of, you know, you've you've had uh, the right wing spitting in our faces and it's almost kind of turning the cheek and and inviting, you know, uh, an, another round of uh, aggression, inviting them to to slap you in the face. It's it seems very much like, uh, you know, throughout there's been this case of weakness, inviting aggression, basically. And and now you, with this kind of declaration of war, you've still got attempts from a lot of the left leaders to try and have that compromise. And and you know, it, but as you say, where's where's the uh, where's the possibility of uh, of compromise with these people who clearly represent a whole different set of class interests? They really represent uh, big business agents. So, you know, what what do you think is that? How should the left really be responding in this situation? Well, certainly, it's got to go on the offensive. You know, it's got to shake itself down and, and shake itself from the lethargy of the past period, and go on the offensive against this uh, this uh, this move. First of all, to suspend uh, Jeremy Corbyn, but it's only the beginning of an attempted to purge within the party, and therefore, you know, the trade union should be uh, demanding that that uh, 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 Keir Starmer, you know, uh, backs off that uh, uh, that Corbyn's reinstated. But that's only just the first thing, really. You know, the, the whole position should be to try and to, to fight for the for the real uh, transformation of the trade union and labour movement. Well, the, the Labour Party is part of the labour movement, and as I said, as I said earlier, you know, the, the problem with the trade, you know, 
the trade unions controlled the Labour Party. You know, the, you know, if anybody's to blame you of a, of a position that we have now, mm. it's those who just left the left the situation slip from their their fingers mm. when there was enormous possibility. They just you know threw in the towel because they wanted to compromise and compromise and compromise. Mm. And, and therefore, I would say this is only a, you know there are those who say, well, you know, the trade unions should, should cut the funding of the Labour Party because they should disaffiliate from the Labour Party. They should create a new Labour Party. Well, you know, they did a bad job, uh, you know, uh, not so long ago. How are they going to do a good job of the new party? What needs to be done is we need to transform the trade unions too. We need fighters in the leadership of the trade unions who are not prepared to buckle, not prepared to give in, not prepared to compromise, um, as well as in the Labour Party. We need lefts who have, you know, who've got a backbone, basically. We're prepared to fight all the way and not to make, mm. you know, to compromise with the right wing and, and placate the right wing. Cause, because all they're doing is stirring up aggression against the, the the rank and file. You know they're showing weakness. That's the point when they should should be showing a strength and purpose. But that is that's a reflection, unfortunately, of their politics. You know the the left in the Labour Party. If there's some criticism, is they're very woolly when it comes to socialism and very woolly when it comes to their, their political aims. And uh, you know again the the Keynesians. You know they want to they want to sort of a, a, you know a patch up capitalism. Mm. And they don't, you know. Well, yes, socialism perhaps in the, in the in the distant future may be when they should be saying, "Look, this is the deepest crisis of capitalism in 300 years." You know that the the, the working class is facing the greatest uh, attacks on its living standards and conditions that we have, have ever seen. Now is the time, surely, to fight for the ideas of a fundamental change in society, of mm. socialism. It's never been more relevant. Mm. And yet, uh, you know, they're, 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 they're skirting around the edges, you know, or, or perhaps can we, can we tinker a bit here? Perhaps you can borrow a few, uh, some money here and, and so on. Rather than understanding, we need a root and branch uh, 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 riddance, if you like, of the capitalist system itself and bring about a socialist planned economy. Mm. Until you have leaders who are prepared to fight for that, that gives you a sense of purpose, a sense of understanding where you're going rather than an attempt to, to patch up capitalism, you know, yeah. and, and all, the, the, all, the, all that goes with it. And that's what we have to, have to fight, in my opinion, for a, for a yes, a tra- change in the labour and trade union movement, a fighting for a, a, a Marxist tendency that's prepared to go to the end. You need yeah. leaders who are going to fight all the way, not to make compromises or, you know, uh, or deals or, uh, you know, or, or uh, are not prepared to, to, to fight in the way that's required. And, you know, Capitalism will not automatically you know, vanish on the scene. It has to be overthrown mm. uh, in order to fight to change society. And that requires class fighters in the trade union movement and class fighters in the leadership of the Labour Party. Mm. We're not going to make any concessions to the right wing. This is not a, a broad church that we're interested in. Yeah. We're interested in, in a socialist party that's prepared to fight for socialism, prepared to put itself at the head of the working class to defend its interests and fight for an alternative society in, in a big way. And, uh, you know, unless we have that, you're going to have, you know, uh, uh, well, you're going to have compromises made. I mean, you, you know, the struggle is going to be more protracted because what it requires is a determined struggle against the right wing to the end. And that means confronting capitalism because that's what they defend. And that means the only alternative is a socialist program in order to, to, uh, to galvanize the working class, to galvanize the labor movement against the right wing who are defenders of capitalism. So everything can be clearly posed and clearly clearly explained, rather than you know we're all in it together mm-hmm. and uh, we're unity of of our, of our we don't want unity we don't want a false unity. How can you have unity with people who are going to, as I said, you know, stab you in the back? Who are going to fight you, sabotage you all the way along the line? And look at this uh, report, you know, given by the the uh, the Equalities Commission it didn't mention the sabotage that took place in the report that was leaked. Was it in uh, February? I think it was. Uh, 800 pages of emails in, in detailing word for word the uh, the uh, the way in which the officials in the Labour Party headquarters sabotaged Corbyn, sabotaged the, the election campaign, engaged in racism and misogyny and all the rest of it. Nothing is said about them. They're they're all there. They sit in, they're sitting pretty. And uh, in fact, what the only thing I, I would argue was why wasn't that report uh, made earlier? Why was it re- made after mm. Corbyn had left? Uh, we d- were defeating the election, and Corbyn had resigned from the leadership. This yeah. should have been no, made made uh, available 
two years ago mm. and it should have been used to clear out these people yeah. and then wage a, a fundamental struggle to transform the Labour Party, bring a black cause for giving the, the democracy to the ranks and so on. And that's the, the fault of the leadership. Well, what else can you say? Yeah. You know, and, uh, you know, of course, we are in favour of, fight, you know, in favour of fighting the right wing and we will support the left, you know, over the right. But we want, uh, if like people who are in the leadership, who are going to really conduct the struggle and not, you know, compromise with capitalism and think there's a way out under capitalism, is a prettier capitalism, which doesn't exist at all. And therefore, you know, yes, it's a battle. It's, it's, it's you know, this, this uh, declaration of war. That's what it is. But do we... But uh, it's just a new stage in the war, isn't it? You know, this has been an ongoing civil war for the last five years. It's just that the now the the, the right wing have, have, have taken the initiative. They've got they've regained control, but they're not fully in control. They've regained the parliamentary Labour, the leadership. Now they want to purge, you know, the vast ranks of the party. That's a different matter altogether. So it's easier said than done. But if you're going to be passive, then they will carry it through. It's got to be a, a you know a struggle, you know. Uh, in order to 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 the end, basically, so, I mean, Rob, to, to fight and fight and fight again, is in the words of Hugh Gate, Gateskill, to well, to rid the party of those pro-capitalist apologists mm. and transform it into a socialist party. That's mm. the only way you're going to end this uh, uh, situation, and that would inspire millions of people actually up and down mm. the country. Because so, uh, the reason why Corbyn was un un undermined fundamentally was he was he was being stabbed in the back every mm. single day. Mm. These right wingers rushing to the press. Rushing to the media, discrediting Torbin, discrediting, discrediting the whole party itself. That's mm. how we we ended up in the mess we're we're in, and that can you know there must be lessons surely you know uh, drawn from this. We can't repeat this mistake. So Rob, the lessons you, are that there cannot be any compromise with the right wing. That we must fight on bold socialist policies to eradicate capitalism as the only solution for the to the working class itself and bring back the democracy in the party. So we can elect it, yeah, democratically elect representatives who are going to be fighters in the interests of the working class, including people who are not on salaries of 80, 90,000 uh, pounds, you know, mm. which is way out of the, the league of ordinary working people. They should be on the salary of, 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 of a skilled worker's wage, you know, and, you know, this is going to be carried into not just the Labour Party, but the trade unions. I'm glad to see that Unison's having an election where Paul Holmes is standing as the left candidate, who again has pledged to, to stand on a worker's wage if he wins the general secretary's position. That's the kind of sacrifice you need. That's the kind of leadership you, you need. And if that is the case in Unison, by the way, because that's uh, been a union on the right wing in the movement for a long time, that'll be an earthquake in the British Labour movement. So I think you have to be careful as well. There's a lot of pessimism around, you know, oh, well, what's happening? Look, there's a fundamental change in the objective situation. This crisis is 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 getting deeper and deeper. It's going to shake up consciousness of the working class well, and all classes of society. As a matter of fact, it's going to turn the trade union movement upside down. Therefore, there's not going to be a, this kind of quiet life in the Labour Party for the right wing. To, this is not the 1950s when they could give reforms. They can't give reforms. It's counter reforms, and therefore there's a crisis of reformism. So it's a it's not a, this is, you know, we're in a period of sharp and sudden changes in the situation. And if they think, if the right wing think that they've sewn everything up and everything's hunky dory, they've got another thing coming because it's the working class who are going to face the brunt of this crisis and they are going to be moving into action, into the trade unions. And from them, they will demand political representation. And that means a fundamental change in the Labour Party itself. So, you know, there's, uh, there's big struggles coming. This is just the first of them, uh, really. And, you know, absolutely, we got to get get cracking. You know, and and we got to fight these uh, these uh, this this uh, this attempted purge in the, in the Labour Party. No two ways about it. But there's a, a bigger battle as well to transform the Labour movement, arm it with the socialist program, and basically transform society itself. And that's where Marxism comes in. It's a part. It 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 allows us a clear perspective. It allows us a clear program to understand. And we are prepared. Yes, to go to the end. You cannot just compromise on this. And that's why, you know, we have to say that the key task is also to build the forces of Marxism in, in Britain and internationally for the events that are coming. And it's a, there are stormy events coming, revolutionary events coming. And therefore, I would say we mustn't be pessimistic, but look at the, to the future. There's no basis of, of, of hope on, the, on, on a capitalist basis. And millions will be looking to transform and change the society. And we have to be prepared for that and understand 
it's going to be a transformation, a retransformation of the labor movement in that coming period, in which Marxism can play a very important role. And therefore, I hope you will help us in that regard by joining us and, and, and uh, preparing the ground for these events that are coming. Well, thank you very much, Rob. I think that's a good place to end it for tonight. A very inspiring uh, call to arms, really, uh, which is what we need right now. No weakness, no more compromises. We've already got a, a war that's been declared here, and it's a, a, a no uh, holds barred battle. I think really, uh, you know, the gloves are off, and I think you've you've really inspired, hopefully, uh, activists out there to get out there and fight, to get organised, and as you say, most importantly, to join us, join Socialist Appeal, the Marxist voice of labour and youth in that fight for a socialist labour party and for a socialist world. So